They got everyone. <laughs> This is how Kodak Black took the Florida rap scene from being on its last leg to being the central focus of the hottest music Rest in peace, X. But before we talk about its historic rise, we got to talk about how the scene almost dies out as a whole. For a long time, the East and West Coast owned hip hop. Back in the 80s, when you thought of rappers, you thought of LA and New York and groups like Public Enemy, NWA, and Rakim. Towards the end of the decade, the South started to get on board with the rap movement. In Texas, the Ghetto Boys were getting some airtime on the radio. Soon, Florida, Louisiana, and Georgia started seeing their own rap groups. What about Tennessee? Through. While these artists existed, Tennessee's a thing. We had some rap compared to northern rappers. Hip hop continued to grow in the South during the 90s, but it was still relatively niche. There wasn't a southern rapper in the world that dominated the charts like Tupac, Biggie, or Jay Z. For the most part, southern rap was seen as less than its northern counterparts. If you want a real rap, you look to New York, not Miami. But times were quickly changing, slowly but sure. Tennessee surely. got turned. People looked down on Southern hip hop. There were still passionate rappers keep, trying to improve the scene. In the mid '80s, Florida would establish keep that same itself energy. as the keep center that same of South rap with Miami bass. Miami bass was a type of rap that was associated with kick drums, heavy bass, faster tempos, and dirty lyrics. The rappers of the Two Live Crew were the pioneers that pushed the movement to its peak popularity. While Miami bass was extremely influential, it never quite hit the mainstream. The songs of the era were often Often considered too inappropriate, and rappers even got into minor legal problems trying to sell their albums. You know those press money bag yo and some other albums? folks. They started getting slapped on records to appease people upset. By money just bag how and Ellie Chopper. Miami bass rap was all that controversy limited the reach of the movement. It is like going to a porno movie and uh, seeing everything. Only it's a porno hearing session. In the early 90s, Florida got some other ones. Peak. Miami bass returned, this time being pushed by younger artists influenced by old heads. These new rappers kept the sound of Miami bass while toning down some of the more controversial elements. This repacking of the genre launched Miami back into the spotlight, with multiple tracks cracking the top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. But no movement could last forever, no matter how popular. So soon, Miami bass was on its way out. It slowly started to lose steam before dying out in the late 90s. This is when rap icons started to rejuvenate it. With the old sound dying, a new wave of Miami street rap was born to take its place. This new era of Florida hip hop was dominated by pretty much one label, Slip and Slide. So you listen, man, you know, being from down south, we don't have the opportunity like uh, California or New York where you can go to a major label and take your demo or go hire me for three about Yeah, I go. Man, we got a <clears throat> part of getting out the mud down here, so we had to go in and create that buck. You know what I'm saying? To make a demand for it. Home of artists like Trina, Plies, and Rick Ross. One Florida rapper of the time we shouldn't forget is Trick Daddy, whose raw lines about living in the hood got him crowned king of Florida rap. With the end of the Miami-based movement, Florida rap certainly hadn't died, but it wasn't what it once was. Despite there being a decent amount of Miami rappers producing music, other states like Louisiana and Tennessee were where people's eyes were. By 1995, Florida What do you, you say? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Listen, years. Listen, listen. Louisiana and Tennessee were. I don't think I don't think y'all heard that. Listen closer. Producing music. Other states like Louisiana and Tennessee were. Y'all hear that? What 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 did it say? Where people's eyes were. Mmm, people's eyes. Take it. Shut shut y'all's mouth. Don't you ever just. Florida hadn't been considered the center. Memphis of the is Tennessee goofy. Georgia driven groups like Outkast and Goody Mob had snatched that crown. When you look at the numbers, the story is clear. Who do we got? We got Young Black, Juicy J's, Starlito, Black Youngster. In the Billboard 100. Compare that to the Atlanta Al Capone, Finesse two times. We got a dude named Duke Dukes. He might as well be Duke Dennis. Close enough. In the Florida rap scene anymore. And just when it seemed like Florida hip hop was I love Memphis. Of air, a young revolutionary yo, 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 yeah, yeah, yo. Tennessee created hit the Quan, all right? We 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 created that. I love Memphis. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was doing our dance now. Yeah, y'all was doing our dance. Forever. Okay, but we, we still got we got Octave. 
a.k.a. Kodak Black, was born in Pompano Beach, Florida on June 11, 1997. While I ain't saying Tennessee's better than Florida now. He started as young as Kodak. Listen, he was spitting bars as far back as elementary school. Kodak knew he had two options, make it as a rapper or join a gang. That knowledge pushed him to work as hard as possible so he could make it in the music business. In October 2015, Drake posted a video dancing to one of Kodak's songs. Almost overnight, Kodak was launched into stardom, signing with Atlantic Record that same month. Despite spending most of his career in and out of prison and in constant controversy, Kodak has managed to stay in the spotlight. His success isn't only from Drake shouting him out. Kodak knows how to market himself. He's got a charismatic personality and uses that to his advantage, using social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud to build a following and promote his music. He's also gotten to brush noses and collab with many well-known artists and producers which helped him increase his visibility and reach a wider Yo, I love that. Wake up in the sky was so fast. I can I can even hate. But he's not the only one. Kodak has collaborated with artists like French Montana and Young Thug and has featured on tracks by other popular rappers like Travis Scott and A Boogie with a Hoodie. Kodak's unique voice, lyrical talents, flow and charisma established him as a young trailblazer. Unlike his Floridian predecessors, can't even hate. eats up every track Kodak drops. He's got four top 10 hits on the Billboard Hot 100. His tracks Y'all remember when he was doing that little dance? Third, narrowly missed the number one spot. Kodak currently has more than triple the amount of top 10 hits than Trick Daddy. If people weren't interested in Florida rap before, Kodak has more than gotten back their attention. Kodak was a front runner in what would be a movement of Florida rappers catching the public eye. New rappers like XXS, Tentacion, Yeah, I was about to say, are you going to say X and Ski? Young Inace soon joined them. Artists were influenced by his sound, flow, and his pride in his life. Yeah, yo, I used to be hitting that in the middle of no, for no reason. Florida. They were proud of it and not afraid to name drop their hometowns in songs. They Denzel Curry. Oh, yeah, Denzel will be cooking too. Why the hell you ain't say him? Ever. Kodak showed that you can make or is he from Florida? Ready to rise to the challenge. The 90s. I don't know my Florida, Florida rappers, rappers like that, like crazy. There were talented rappers. If no one wanted to listen to them, luckily, Kodak had all eyes on Florida. Music fans are now way more willing to give Florida rappers a chance. Many are even actively tracking upcoming talent from the area. Since this era has shown there's real superstar potential potential lurking in Florida, Kodak getting fans invested in Florida rapper is almost more important than him inspiring the artists themselves. It meant these rappers had a chance to get the numbers they deserved on the charts. It's not just fans that have renewed interest in Florida's upcoming talent. It's producers and publishing companies too. Before, hey. labels interested in signing Florida rappers. He didn't, he didn't name this one rapper. Kodak's success, publishing companies are looking to catch the next star. Since the rise of the Florida rap scene, more and more rappers like Ski and XXS Tentacion have been signed. Bro, I miss Ski. X, bro, he got me through so much stuff. That's why you'll never, that's why you'll always hear me. I want an X, like, banner or something custom. Maybe him even in my stream over there. Kodak proved you didn't have to be from Miami to make it. He, along with XXS, Florida got Brown. No, they <laughs> are all from Broward County, which was virtually unknown before their success. Fulio, Young Ines, and Nardo are all rappers elevating Jacksonville. You gotta be more than a soldier to make it through Jacksonville. With all this talent in all these places, the Florida rap scene has never seen a diverse pool of voices. The rappers aren't just from different places. They also have different styles. Kodak, as we all know, has a very unique sound. The fact that he's managed to become so popular while doing his own thing has emboldened Florida rappers to be experimental. Who the Jackson hell is changing me? The drill scene. XXS Tentacion was building on emo rap. Yo, he was the goat. Lyrical rapper. No two rappers in Florida sound the same anymore. So far, bring back on the indirect ways Rest Kodak in peace, has X, bro. the rap scene. But he's interacted closely and directly with many of Florida's artists. He was famously close with XXS Tentacion and collaborated with the Roll in Peace, man. Roll in Peace. I wanted, I so wanted to go to an X concert, bro. Rolling Peace was the I never got the chance, bro. Song of X's career and helped to put him on the map. When X died, Kodak didn't stay silent. He released Falling Over, a tribute to his fellow Florida rapper. X isn't the only artist from Florida Kodak is featured. Some others who've joined him on tracks include Rod Wave, Lil Pump, and Gunna. Kodak hasn't only worked with Snip. newer rappers, <laughs> he's also worked with old heads like Plies. Oftentimes, the artists Kodak collabs with are younger or smaller than him, and his songs with them end up being big hits. Kodak's willingness to work with artists from his area is another way he's uplifting the scene by giving those rappers access to his massive audience. For decades, Florida's rap scene struggled to crack the mainstream. It came close with the Miami 
Miami base, but controversy bogged down the movement. For a long time, the hip-hop scene remained locked to Miami, limiting the voices and styles. Even when there was a legitimate talent to be heard like Trick Daddy, they just weren't doing numbers like Star oh, so you, gotta, you just gotta hit it randomly, bro. When you hear a Kodak song, it's good. Kodak's rise was meaningful because it shattered Kodak all had the, the I mean, Lil Pump had the craziest fallout, bro. He cracked into the mainstream and has become a household name. He got the numbers and plays from artists from other states. While he has had a ton of controversies, that hasn't stopped his music from gaining popularity. He's not from Miami and does doesn't sound like any other Y'all remember when he got super big because uh, he was drinking too much lean? Was it the lean or was it the prison? It might have been both. Legacy that's admired for years to come. Love him or hate him, he got Florida rappers back on the map. Good rappers can come from just about anywhere. You never know where the next superstar will come from. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe and hit the like button to find out where the next great rapper will start. I got everyone. <laughs> Yo, that's, that's so accidental. Yo. Yo. Oh, my goodness. Bobby Smurda. Bobby Smurda. Bad baby. Miami, Florida. <laughs> Y'all got bad baby. You know, you know, one one thing that I realized is that they don't have one of the next up and coming. Let me let me let me let me let me put you on. Let me put you on. You know, one of the best Christian rappers. You know what I'm saying? One of his songs blew up on Dick Doc. This one, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, you know, he's already, he's already kind of going mainstream and stuff. But you know, there's still time to to say y'all know, y'all know about him. You know, you know, I known him since like, like 2020. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get y'all, you know, tapped in. You know, let y'all, let y'all get saved before it's too late. All right, W bid.